Percussion emerged as the first musical instruments. Around 6,000 BCE in West Africa, sticks, rocks, shakers, and drums made from logs and animal skins were combined to create rhythmic music for celebrations and religious ceremonies. Percussion ensemble is like a drum circle where players execute the same impromptu rhythm. Today, percussive instruments, such as drums, are still used in a percussion ensemble to make musical rhythms that reflect our time. In the 1920s and 30s, percussion-only music entered the Western orchestral setting with Edgar Varese's ionization, which premiered in France in 1933. Ionization demonstrates the evolution of percussion music in a classical setting. This composition ref reflects the avant-garde experimentation that was prevalent in the interwar period and provides a good example of what percussion orchestra is. Much like a wind symphony and unlike an ensemble, it is a percussion in a percussion orchestra, each player has an individual part, distinct from the other players. Luigi Russolo, George Antile, and John Cage represent three of the most significant percussion composers of the 20th century. Russolo, although not using traditional percussion instruments, sparked the beginning of percussive sounds being interpreted as music in 1913. Antile used a, com a combination of new technology, such as bells and sirens, and electricity to create percussion music. Cage, one of the most influential composers of the post-World War II era, made percussion compositions a vital part of modern classical music. Employing the new technologies and artistic experimentation of the first half of the 20th century, all men paved the way for the acceptance of percussion music and inspired future composers. The present day percussion orchestra traces its origin to the, fut to the futurist movement, which began in Italy in the first decade of the 20th century. The futurists embraced technology and the industrialization. They emphasized the idea that, future, that the future would be speed, chaos, and machines. The futurists expressed themselves in many fields, such as art, writing, and philosophy, and promoted their ideas in books, poems, art, and newspapers. The futurists were led by Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, an artist and journalist who established the movement's philosophy in his publication, The Futures Manifesto, in 1909. Marinetti's manifesto critiqued the social and political traditions of Italy by challenging Italians to abandon the traditional Western classical canon. He proclaimed, quote, the essential elements of our poetry will be courage, audacity, and revolt, end quote. Marinetti wanted to demolish the past and have Italy only focus on the future, which was technology and industry. Luigi Russolo, a member of Marinetti's close circle of futurists, was a painter who rose in prominence in the movement. Russolo believed that Marinetti's Futurist Manifesto lacked a detailed plan for futurists, and in March of 1913, he wrote The Art of Noises, a document that argued, music should reflect the sounds of industrialization. In this writing, he identified what he called, quote, primitive people, end quote. They lived in silence until they began to make noises with objects. After this discovery, these early civilizations began to make percussive music to speak to their gods. Russolo praised the improvised and rhythmic sounds because it was not hampered by what traditional music theory demanded. He believed that all, all music is sound, and he challenged his audience to reflect why they did not perceive all sound as music. Russolo wanted composers to stop writing music that mimicked 
classical conventions and adhered to the strict use of melody and harmony. Instead of using traditional percussion instruments, like a snare or bass drum in his compositions, Russolo disassembled these instruments and created 16 of his own and named them intono remori, meaning noisemakers. Each instrument he invented was meant to mimic certain urban sounds, such as a car engine, a factor's machinery, and the noises from the streets. Each instrument that he created was able to be tuned to a specific musical note, such as a C or G sharp. This was an important feat because percussion instruments are tuned for the timbre, or the quality of sound, rather than to a note. As the precursor to modern percussion orchestra, Russolo was the first to use instruments that deconstructed traditional drums and what was then considered modern technology. His intono remori were used to create music and random noises, and his work challenged artists of all kinds to break from Western conception of what art should be. In the 1920s, the avant-garde artistic movement emerged in the West. Avant-garde means to experiment with ideas. In the 1920s, when the avant-garde movement emerged, it was an artistic movement focused on disregarding 19th century aesthetics. Avant-garde painters, photographers, movie directors, and music composers produced art that purposely dismissed traditional conventions. Avant-garde composers held the same belief as Rousselot and abandoned conventional music theory. Avant-garde composer and classically trained pianist George Antile created music that ignored classical theory. As an avant-garde composer, Antile's mission was to compose music that ignored traditional theory. As an unruly and arrogant child, Antile fought against the restrictions of his parents and society's rules. At 19, he briefly lived in a house in New Jersey with four other avant-garde artists who described him as extremely radical and irritating. <laughs> He often played the same three or, notes for, three or four notes for an entire day, seeming to be mesmerized by the quality of the sound. By 1923, he was living in Paris and composed his infamous Ballet Mécanique composition, scored for a percussion orchestra. In it, Antile recreated the sound of percussive noises of the city. He used the steel factories of his hometown, Trenton, New Jersey, as his inspiration. Loud, the loud, clanging, atonal sounds that surrounded him became his music. Antahoe believed that percussion would be the future of music. Ballet Mécanique reflected his desire to capture the rhythmic and atonal sounds created by industrialization. Originally scored for a French film, the composition had a small debut in Paris in 1923 for his friends, and in 1927 debuted in Carne Carnegie Hall in New York. That night, Carnegie Hall was filled with supporters of this new kind of music, as well as those who wanted to witness what was already being advertised as insanity on a stage. Among the 35 percussion instruments Ballet Mécanique score called for, the most unique were three airplane propellers, but Antile could not locate any, so an electric fan was used instead. It faced the audience and caused papers, toupees, and other objects to fly across the hall, causing chaos. The audience whistled, laughed, and yelled as the piece was being performed. Music critics claimed Ballet Mécanique to be the biggest musical failure of the century, and Antile was forced into musical exile. instrumentation is still considered to be technologically advanced. The 1923 version of the composition was scored for 14 synchronized player pianos 
as well as two pianos, three xylophones, seven electric bells, three airplane propellers, one siren, four bass drums, and one gong. Modern technology in the early 1990s allowed the piece to be, perf to be performed in 1992 by the new Palais Royal Orchestra and Percussion Ensemble in New York. By the 1930s, there was less funding for the avant-garde arts because of the Great Depression. The few that could financially support artists and composers funded classical music rather than the avant-garde. Instead, many of these avant-garde composers became faculty members at colleges and universities, which allowed them to continue to write their music. One of the most famous is John Cage, a former professor at the Cornish College of the Arts in Washington State in the 1930s and Black Mountain College in Western North Carolina in the 1950s. In 1927, Cage studied music at the Paris Conservatory where he was introduced to the avant-garde works of composers such as Igor Stravinsky and Bella Bartok. Like Russolo, he began to question what qualifies an object as an instrument and why music was only considered music if it followed the classical rules. Cage became obsessed with George Antile and the Italian futurist who explored new ideas for noises that mimicked industrial sounds. Like Antile, Cage wanted to break away from the traditional music theory. He continued to, stu he continued to study avant-garde music and art until his parents could no longer support him because of the Great Depression. In the 1930s, John Cage began to create compositions that were heavily influenced by electrification. His father, John Sr., was an electrical engineer who patented communication systems and military technology. They worked on projects, such as household appliances, throughout the 1930s and 40s. The skills he developed on those collaborations were used to create the Imaginary Landscape series between 1939 and 1952, a composition in five movements, included a wide range of amplified instruments, such as a turntable, wires, and buzzers, among various percussion instruments. Cage's compositions took the use of electricity and percussion to its peak. After the Imaginary Landscape series, he wrote Credo and Us in honor of Pearl Harbor in 1942. During the piece, the percussion instruments are inter interrupted by interludes of real-time radio. The final piece he created that focused on percussive sounds was Water Music in 1952. He wrote the score while teaching at Black Mountain College, but it was not premiered until 1960 on a CBS television show. It was his most radical piece at the time, as it did not include many traditional percussion instruments. Instead, he used percussive sounds made by everyday items, including a blender, radios, a teapot, a pressure cooker, and a rubber duck. <laughs> Along with the unique instrumentation, Cage used a new way of timing. Instead of using beats per minute, he timed actions with a stopwatch. Cage was fueled by his philosophy that percussion was more than just the percussion instruments. It was the action that created the sound. first half of the 20th century, each of these composers, Luigi Russolo, George Antile, and John Cage, advocated for the development of percussion as a legitimate instrumentation choice for composers. They embraced the new technologies and industries of that time, and their efforts positively changed the mentality towards percussion-only music. Marshall University has a percussion orchestra and has performed some of these compositions for audiences that are often shocked yet fascinated by the sounds. Mars Hill's percussion orchestra plays a variety of percussion music, from West African drum scores to contemporary percussion music, such as Eric Awazin's 1999 Palace of the Nine Perfections. <laughs> 